If you're a scientist, it's not cool to refer to things as itsy bitsy or teensy winksy. We need to be more precise, so when describing dilute solutions where there is a very small amount of substance in a very large volume, scientists use a notation called parts per. Parts per hundred you are already familiar with, because it's the same thing as percent. The term percent comes from Latin, as does the symbol that we use for it. You can see a visual demonstration of 1% or 1 part per 100 if you drop one drop of food coloring in 5 milliliters of water, because one drop is about 0.05 milliliters. To be precise, it really should be one drop added to 4.95 milliliters, because one drop added to 5 milliliters would actually be one part per 101, but we don't need that level of accuracy for this demonstration. Parts per thousand can be demonstrated by showing one drop dispersed into 50 milliliters. Parts per thousand is one of the common measures of salt in seawater, and we'll come back to that shortly. The symbol for parts per thousand is like that for percent, but with an extra zero. Parts per 10,000 is the equivalent of one drop in 500 milliliters, and its symbol is the same as percent, but with two extra zeros. Parts per 10,000 is used for things like measuring the amount of carbon dioxide in a well-ventilated room. And parts per million is the equivalent of one drop in 50 liters, and instead of a symbol, it's designated as ppm. So what do you think? Will one drop of food coloring in 50 liters be visible? I leave it to you to find out. Apparently, one part per million of oil dispersed in water isn't visible, and neither is 10 parts per million, based on this picture I found on the web. Note that they give the units as ppm or parts per million, or milligrams per liter. You will often see these used interchangeably, but that's not strictly correct because milligrams is a weight and liters is a volume. It really should be milligrams per kilogram, which are both weights, but since one liter of water at four degrees centigrade weighs one kilogram, this designation is used more often when giving concentration information to the public because people recognize liters more readily than they recognize kilograms. So if you can't see it, does that mean it's not important? Well, one component of crude oil is benzene, a known carcinogen. You can smell benzene in water at concentrations as low as two parts per million, and some people can taste it at less than one parts per million. Benzene is such a dangerous chemical that the EPA has set the maximum contamination level of benzene in drinking water as five parts per billion. So what are parts per billion? That's the equivalent of one drop in a tanker truck filled with water, and its abbreviation is PPB. And when we get down to concentrations so small they are measured in parts per trillion, we're talking about the equivalent of one drop in a volume that is equivalent to 20 Olympic-sized pools. Now that's really itsy-bitsy. Now getting back to using parts per thousand as a measure of salinity, a good demonstration of the parts per thousand of salt in seawater is to boil down one liter of seawater. To do this, you want to measure the weight of salt in a known quantity of water. In this case, I'm using a kitchen scale that I can convert from measuring in pounds and ounces to measurement in grams by pushing a button on the bottom of the scale. One liter contains 1,000 milliliters, which is approximately equal to 1,000 grams or one kilogram. So measure out 1,000 grams. Okay, I overshot, but 1,004 is close enough for this demonstration. Now boil the water off using a no-stick pan. I filmed this with a cool little iPhone app called Lapsit, so I can show something that took 26 minutes in less than a minute. Now weigh the salt. Since this was full-strength seawater, you would expect about 30 to 35 grams of salt because seawater has a salinity of about 30 to 35 parts per thousand. Well, that's not good. Only 20 grams. What went wrong? The problem is a lot of the salt stuck to the no-stick pan and some of it splattered out onto the stovetop. Can you devise a way to get a more precise measurement of the amount of salt in seawater?